Top 10 Harley Davidsons of All Time We tried to come up with a definitive list of the top 10 Harleys of all time. We really did. We asked our friends and colleagues, we asked neighbors, and their cats, we posted on Craigslist and took out classified ads in the local paper, no, not really. Mainly, we sent out queries via social media. We hit up fellow motorcycle journalists, whose knowledge and experience is vast and insightful. We asked builders and customizers, whose creative takes on the American classics have ranged from practical to unwritable. We queried rockers, racers, computer geeks and everyone in between, because the motor company's appeal is universal. Our panel was varied, and everyone had a favorite, but no one could agree on the best of all time. 10. FXR Descended from the FX Super Glide and the precursor of the Dyna platform, the FXR seems to be the Harley most loved among enthusiast builders and customizers on our panel. Brian Clock of Clockworks, the FXR was my first ever HD product. It continues to carry a timeless hot rod style that is still a very functional motorcycle. The frame style itself is just a great stance. The FXR was the best handling HD to date, agrees Bill Bryant of Biltwell Incorporated. It was Eric Buell's first Harley project. I even like the fact it was killed early, since purists hated it. 9. FL Since 1941, large-framed Harleys received the storied FL designation, signifying overhead valve big twin engines with wide front tires and long-distance capabilities. With the exception of some soft tail models, today it's the touring line of Harley Davidson that live up to the big and plush FL designation. That deluxe reputation really got rolling in MY 1949 when the FL was Harley's first recipient of hydraulically damp telescopic forks and was bestowed with the moniker Hydroglide. Easier if you had asked me, what's your favorite date of all time? Veteran moto journalist Reg Kidder laughs when asked about his favorite Harley Davidson. My first thought was a 1987 FXRC, as it was my first Harley and a bit of a stunner, looks wise. However, being a journalist Reg is inclined toward objectivity, so he does his best to leave sentimentality out of the equation and gives the nod to the 1949 Hydroglide FL. To me. This model is a bridge from the old to the new. I prefer the looks of the older knucklehead FLs, but, the hydraulic forks of 49 ushered in a new era for Harley. In 1958, the FL received a new frame with a swing gauger and a pair of coil over shocks, the first big twin to feature a fully suspended chassis. The Hydroglide was renamed the Duo Glide. 8. KR750 if the K model was the predecessor to the Sportster, the KR750 was the granddaddy of flat track racing. It was the popular choice from the early 50s until the late 60s, as racers famous and obscure rode the side valve class C stalwart to countless trophies the world over and was so dominant that in 1969 the AMA rules were tweaked to allow British and Japanese bikes to actually compete. Everyone knows I'm not a huge fan of the bar and shield, the vintage and, Paul Dorlins, told Motorcycle.com. But I do have a favorite. For me, the most exceptional HD ever built was the late 60s KRTT racer. Its development was taken further than any other racing engine, ever. How they managed to squeeze 150 miles per hour from a 750cc side valve engine is still a miracle of intense and inspired tuning. Veteran moto journalist Mark Gardner, author of On Motorcycles, The Best of Back Marker, agrees. I know I'm not the only one who'll choose the KR750. Although the motor was primitive, tuners like CRX Tel devised many hot rod tricks to keep it competitive with the British bikes that were allowed in the class, Gardner says. 7. XR Unsurprisingly, Evel Knievel's favorite Harley was on the lists of many of our panelists. Another racing legend, the XR750 took the mantle from the KR and zoomed away with it, and remains to this day the winningest bike in AMA racing history. For Will Benedict, a Brooklyn-based software engineer, 
avid builder and motorcyclist, there's no doubt which Harley is the choice of the enthusiast who relishes diving and dodging. All time? I'd take an XR750, he says. And even if we're talking production Harleys, I'd pick the XR1200. It was unique and compelling model in an endless sea of giant cruisers. Don't know why they stopped making them. That question is also on the mind of the Seattle musician Andrew McKeague, who races vintage motocross at Arma events when he's not touring. Mine, XR1200, is my favorite. He laughs. But of all time. I'd have to say the XR750. It's got racing heritage, going, back to board trackers of the teens, and it's still winning today. Name another bike that can say the same. 6. FXDP Dyna Defender Harley's police issue Dyna was produced from 2001 for and for some reason was never very popular with police departments. Perhaps our commenters can shed some light on this. It differs from the standard Dyna of its time in its solo saddle, dual-disc front brakes, boxy bags, mini ape bar, tall rear shocks with black springs and, if you're lucky, a factory-mounted light bar with red and blue pursuit lights. Designed as an active-duty police vehicle, there were approximately 300 manufactured in each year of its existence, making the FXDP a rather collectible Dyna. I love it because with its the blacked out drivetrain, dual disc front end and plenty of storage in those hard bags, it's a like an early version of a bagger, only more maneuverable, Ken Kant, owner of Rise Above Consulting and Moto Blogger at Forever2Wheels.com, told us. 5. FXV Sturgis It's the most badass bike Harley Davidson has ever made. I'm with my old buddy Tyler Greenblatt associate editor of American Iron Magazine, on this one. I love the short-lived FXV, from the king and queen seat to the Sturgis nameplate emblazoned right across the forks so everyone can see the badness coming their way. It was only produced from 1982, but while many discontinued Harleys are no-brainers, the obsolete FXV, like many others on this list, is a cult favorite. Featuring dual primary and secondary belts and thick-spoked wheels, the FXV was an all-black version of the successful FXS Low Rider. For something made over 30 years ago, Tyler says, it sure has a lot in common with the dark custom bikes rolling off the Moco line today. 4. XL After 110 years of building motorcycles, the Sportster is arguably the most versatile platform the motor company has ever produced. Whether in 883 or 1200 cc versions, the Sporty is so many things to so many people, from an excellent beginner bike to a cool as hell bar opera to an effective commuter. Is there nothing the Sportster can't do? David Zemla of Burley Brand says no. Sportsters are my favorite, and not for what they are but for what they can be. Zimla told us from the climate-controlled comfort of a cross-country flight to the inaugural AIM Expo. It's a virtually unkillable platform, right at home as a chopper, dirt tracker, cafe, bobber or scrambler and does each with minimal spend and maximum fun. Okay, that sounds a bit like the hyperbole of a zealot. But it's hard to argue with Dave's logic. 3. L. With its 1936 L-Line the motor company introduced the knucklehead V-twin, often considered the grandfather of modern Harley engines due to its overhead valve setup. It had a displacement of 61 cubic inches, or about 1,000 cc. I'm drawn to mid to late 30s L's, says Jackie Van Ham, documenter of the classic bike scene at the Vintage Advantage. For Jackie. The early era of Nux harkens to the days when motorcycling was still a gentleman's sport, before it became a symbol of rebellion and freedom. Great lines, vivid colors, strong fluid shapes that reference Art Deco styles, she explains. These bikes are beautiful pieces of Americana, what I think of when I think American motorcycle. 2. Panhead Famed rally MC and personality Jay Allen formerly of the Broken Spoke Saloon and Kiwi Indian Motorcycles, 
offered one of his typically uproarious exclamations in response to our query of the best Harley of all time. There isn't one, Alan wrote, his enthusiasm bellowing through the computer. But 1948 was the last year of Springer's and the first year of Panhead's. So a 48 Panhead is a serious contender. And if you've ever attended one of Jay's bike shows or bikini contests, then you know there was no need for us to add emphasis to his commentary, those exclamation points and capital letters are all his. 1. 1915-11F As a member of the Motorcycling Hall of Fame, avid collector, participant in the annual Motorcycle Cannonball and originator of the Kickstart Classic, Buzz Cantor, editor and publisher of American Iron Magazine, is an obvious panelist for any list of all-time Harley Davidsons. Buzz offered many suggestions, and we appreciate them all. But it wasn't until after we compiled the results that we realized one of his choices was ideal for the only obvious number placement on this list. All of the other Harleys listed here show up in no particular order. But the 1915 11F belongs at number 1.